abbiamo uh, una resistenza e una mancanza di eh, sperimentazione nelle nostre istituzioni pubbliche. Eh, pertanto abbiamo identificato tre modi per far fronte a queste sfide. Incoraggiare le parte i partenariati pubblici e pri privati e abbiamo portato avanti questo punto nella maggior parte delle eh, iniziative che abbiamo capeggiato. Per esempio, posso uh, darvi uh, l'esempio tele della telemedicina, della strategia cloud, dove abbiamo lavorato uh, in stretto le co strettamente con il settore privato. Abbiamo anche uh, delle eccellenze che hanno potuto creare degli aggregati fra le migliori competenze, idee e tecnologie disponibili uh, nel Paese che si parli del privato o del pubblico e speriamo che ciò potrà ehm, portare a un nuovo livello, il livello della performance delle amministrazioni. Un esempio di questo eh, è la cooperazione multilaterale eh, fra eh, multi stakeholder eh, che è un punto eh, chiave per permettere al governo di stare al passo. E ciò è ancora più vero nel settore digitale. Infine, eh, la nostra terza azione è di ehm, cercare di eh, trattenere i nostri eh, talenti nel settore pubblico e privato eh, nel, nelle competenze digitali. Se guardate al nostro eh, paese, abbiamo 15 milioni di cittadini che, non vivono, eh, nel, che vivono all'estero ma abbiamo un'altra categoria di cittadini che sono i nomadi digitali. Questo mi ha um, interessato ultimamente perché ho notato che il 53% dei migliori ricercatori nell'intelligenza artificiale sono immigrati e persone che non lavorano nel loro paese di provenienza. Se è un settore altamente caratterizzato da nomadi digitali ehm, e L'intelligenza artificiale è una, è una competenza chiave del mondo di oggi. Come ha detto uh, Biden, possiamo attrarre i talenti pagandoli meglio. Eh, questa è stata una frase recente. Ma possiamo ugualmente migliorare le loro condizioni di lavoro, eh, basandoci sulla flessibilità, l'inclusione, la parità di genere. Eh, e creando pertanto un uh, ambiente molto fertile dal punto di vista umano. E infine possiamo uh, fornire dei crediti di imposta per uh, delle, le persone più uh, uh, competenti. Come avrete compreso dalle, dai miei commenti, cerchiamo di agire su ogni... Uh, volano di questi partenariati che si parli del privato o del pubblico eh, con, cercando di coinvolgere diversi stakeholder. Abbiamo bisogno di questa collaborazione ma abbiamo anche bisogno di eh, energia per eh, mettere insieme questo motore propulsore dell'innovazione e per far ciò abbiamo bisogno di persone che vogliano creare eh, e che provengano dal settore dell'istruzione, dei programmi eh, universitari e anche attraverso uh, la, um, uh, il, il trattenimento dei cervelli in Italia e questo può essere fatto ovviamente attraverso migliori investimenti nel settore industriale e nelle tecnologie. Vi ringrazio nuovamente per la vostra attenzione e vi auguro una buona giornata. And you can see there the great plan. Potete apprezzare qui i grandi piani che sono um, previsti per il futuro. Sono molto lieta di ascoltare questi interventi e sarò ancora lieta di ascoltare quello che... 15 anni ora, quindi posso vedere la transizione, posso vedere cosa sta succedendo qui. E siamo davvero sulla super highway qui, non c'è nessuno tornando indietro, non c'è nessuno piccoli roads. Um, like we have in beautiful roads in Italy, we're, we're full steam ahead, as everybody is. So I really want to welcome, and I want you all 
to uh, join me in this welcome to the Minister here for Government Development and the Future, Her Excellency, the Minister of State. So please, a very, very Italian warm welcome for Her Excellency Ohud Kalfan Al-Rumi. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, a very good morning to all of you. And allow me first to thank Mr. Paolo Glissanti and Italy Pavilion for this kind invitation to be here with you in this morning. I would like also to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to the United Arab Emirates. I trust that you are building fruitful meet, meet connections and utilizing the endless opportunities of Expo 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the pace of technological advancement and digital transformation is accelerating rapidly. Today, we are witnessing years worth of digital transformation happening in a matter of months. And the world is likely to experience more technological change in the next 10 years than it, it did in the past 100 years. This comes with new challenges, such as evolving customer experiences and expectations and need to have services that are productive, uh, proactive, productive, personalized, and available at any time and place. It also changes the nature of work and skills needed, widening the digital skill gaps at both the basic and advanced levels. It, however, also creates opportunities for governments, for businesses, and people alike. First and foremost, it is the main driver of economic value. By 2023, digitally transformed enterprises are expected to account for 53 trillion US dollars, more than half of the global GDP. Moreover, it boosts productivity, increases efficiency, reduces costs, and simplifies people's lives. Esteemed guests, in the United Arab Emirates, we had the foresight to anticipate these opportunities early on. When we started our e-government program more than 20 years ago, there was no pressing need for it at that time. However, because of that foresight and government decision, it gave us resilience amid the pandemic and ensured the continuity of our businesses and services. We also established the UAE Council for Digital Wellbeing early 2020, even before COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic, because we understood early on the importance of ensuring the digital well-being of our citizens, maintaining a balance between the digital and real life, promoting digital literacy and skills, and raising awareness about the purposeful use of technology. More recently, we managed turning 80% of litigation hearings to virtual sessions on a permanent basis. We also launched the UAE API Marketplace, a government platform that enables the private sector to leverage the government APIs to provide seamless services to customers. And Dubai has become the world's first 100% paperless government, saving 14 million working hours. All these efforts help us achieve 98% digital transformation of government services, reducing customer visit to service centers by more than 11 million and saving more than 2 billion US dollars in cost. Dear friends, the past two years demonstrated when there is a sense of urgency, government have an unprecedented ability for innovation, agility, and speed of delivery. Digital will empower governments to take leapfrogs 
in tackling challenges and seizing opportunities across all sectors, as opposed to the traditional incremental development path. And governments need to act in three key areas to accelerate the digital transformation and embrace the opportunities it offers. First, changing the mindset. A successful digital transformation journey requires government to drive national digital transformation agendas rather than just redefine what and how technology is utilized within governments. It also requires a digital mindset that rethinks every aspect of government work, whether it's services, policies, legislations, to ensure that they are digital ready for implementation. For example, we, think to, we need to think how legislations or laws, we move them from just designing the laws into designing digital ready legislations and policies for smoother implementation. Second, bridging the digital skills gap. The source of digital transformation is not only dependent on technology, but also is dependent on human capital. Technological advancement created a global skill gap with massive economic implications. Closing that gap could add 11.5 trillion US dollars to global GDP by 2028. And achieving that requires ensuring that all people, all communities are digitally included, so no one is left behind. Moreover, with 50% of employees needing reskilling by 2025, it also requires access to lifelong digital skilling opportunities to bridge the digital skills divide. Within governments, we need to ensure that we have the competency to operate in an increasingly digital world and to be fully aware of the new and emerging technologies at all levels, organizations, leadership, teams, and individual levels. From Web 3.0 to Metaverse, to blockchain, to cryptocurrencies, to NFTs and tokenization, we, government leaders, need to understand digital technology and its implications on government models, policies, legislations, systems, and structures. Government employees also need to be equipped with the digital skills necessary to unlock the potential of digital technologies and data, and to be empowered to challenge and disrupt the legacy and traditional government models and systems in order to provide innocent, innovative, and preemptive services, boost productivity and new resources in a better and efficient way and deliver better outcomes to people. Third, building future partnerships. As a government, we neither do everything by ourselves or claim that we have the solutions or answers for everything. Conducting a successful long-term and large-scale digital transformation requires building mission-oriented, multi-stakeholder digital partnerships, including the private sector, academia, NGOs, organizations, and communities at large. The role of telecommunication service providers from investing in new digital infrastructures to building digital skills to enhancing the availability of and access of networks and data cannot be stressed enough. The journey also requires digital collaborations across nations. Such partnerships will not only be key for accelerating digital transformation and bridging the digital skills divide, but also for accelerating global recovery, building global resilience, and preparing for a better future. I thank you again for this opportunity to engage with our digital partners and wish you a successful forum and fruitful discussions. Thank you very much. And let me thank you, Your Excellency, so much. Um, thank you, indeed, for those you know, very engaging and inspiring words, bringing us up to date with all of the great work that's been happening here in the UAE. And also, I, I love the way you, you talk about 
the technology that almost in many ways is a given, but the talent that has to come with it, how absolutely essential that is for a country like the United Arab Emirates, for a country like Italy, indeed for the whole world. So the challenges I think that we face globally, we also face individually, but we can't meet those challenges without cooperation, without collaboration, and without partnerships. And talking about partnerships, I now want to welcome the chairman of TIM. He is with us here, and he will talk more about the technology that will make sure that we're well on our way. So please, a warm welcome. He's joining us virtually. Salvadora Rossi joins us. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Uh, good morning, of course, ladies and uh, gentlemen. I'm, I'm sorry not to be there in, in person, uh, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm very honored and happy uh, to be with you as a representative of uh, uh, Team Group and to take part of this event on digitalization and new skills. Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank Commissioner Paolo Grisenti uh, for welcoming us and for organizing today's event. Uh, I would also like uh, to take this opportunity to congratulate him for being awarded uh, Best Entrepreneurial Project of the Year for the Italian Pavilion here at uh, Expo Dubai. I, I, I also thank Minister Colau for his constant availability and for being with us uh, today. And let me say for his uh, very acute and penetrating remarks. And finally, I'd like to thank Minister Ohud Kalpana Rumi, uh, who enthusiastically embraced the idea of this event. Beauty connects people. Uh, that's Italy's claim in Expo Dubai. Uh, I believe that we must always have the will to exploit technology to promote people's growth and enrichment, spreading the culture of beauty beyond borders. Uh, today is an occasion to talk about uh, the role uh, uh, of Team Group in Italy's digital transformation to boost its sustainable development. Sustainability and digitalization, in our view, are strongly connected. Digital can be an extraordinary tool for economic and social growth, leaving no one behind thus with an inclusive approach. Team Sustainability's plan is largely based on this concept. We strive uh, to be more efficient, uh, to use less energy, and therefore help create a circular economy and achieve zero emissions on a social and governance level uh, through our technologies, Internet of Things, 5G, uh, cybersecurity and others, we wish to stimulate sustainable behaviors and lifestyles. I am referring in particular to smart city and smart agriculture projects and the national strategic poll regarding climate. The group companies participating here today together with other guests are specialized in these key areas of digital transition. Sparkle CEO Elisabetta Romano is promoting uh, SD WAN solutions, providing global rich with secure, flexible, high performing, low latency connections. Carlo Dazarobiondo Novo's CEO is proposing new cloud solutions. Juan Godin, Olivetti's CEO, is focusing on IoT innovation uh, as the IoT best of breed platform on the market, uh, integrating both 5G and big data. Eugenio Santagata tells his CEO is fostering security to prevent, uh, among other things, 
the emerging digital divide. Tim Group, therefore, is here to talk about the central role it plays in supporting technological innovation with the aim of connecting people and why not spreading our idea of beauty throughout the world. Now, uh, before I go and before you start uh, uh, the discussions, I would like to share a video which can also be viewed in the Pavilion's innovation space and which summarizes the concepts I briefly mentioned. Enjoy the video and I wish you all a great event and a good morning. Thank you for the attention. So a big thanks, of course, um, indeed to all of our speakers for the opening session. I think we're all energized. Uh, we're all ready for our two big panel discussions now, so I'm really, really excited to get them started. So we're going to be looking at digital transformation in this first session, and then in our second session, we're going to move and really look at digital transformation, particularly when it comes to administration. We have a wonderful panel in both sessions for you, a little bit of uh, digital action too because not everybody could be here so we're going to have some people here with us and some will join us virtually of course so let me welcome our guests who are here and then we will welcome in our two vid uh, digital guests so for this panel the ceo of eddie salat has taken the time to join us a very warm welcome please for his excellency hassam dawidar so we're delighted that he's with us and if i might have you join us perhaps here so it's great you've taken the time thank you so much also here in person is the CEO of Olivetti. So Kwang Ngodin is with us also. So thank you so much for taking care. We'll put you sitting next to him there. And also here, the industry development for um, the director for industry development, the Middle East area for RENA Consulting. We're absolutely delighted to have Lorenzo Canavacciolo. So it's lovely to have him here. And here we are, our two wonderful guests who are joining us virtually. We'd like to welcome Professor Giorgio Ventre, the director of the Apple Academy in Naples. Lovely to see you. Give us a wave. You can hear us. We know you're there. Wonderful. Thank you. And also, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the CEO of Sparkle, Elisabetta Romano. So let's get started. And Elizabeth, I held you in this position because I want to give you the first question and I want you to start off this great discussion for us. And, um, we need to say goodbye just a moment to Her Excellency. Thank you so much for taking the time. We're very, very honored. We know you have a busy schedule and thank you for being with us. So, Elisabetta, you talk a lot about the evolution of connectivity. I absolutely, I love this phrase. So, talk to us about this in a little bit more detail, and particularly in terms of the cooperation to, you know, in terms of global and local partners. Yes. So, first of all, um, digital transformation, we are using the term digital transformation since uh, probably a couple of decades, but now after the the, the pandemic after the COVID, probably everyone understand what the digital transformation means, and uh, a connectivity is a key enabler for 
this uh, this digital uh, digital transformation. Um, we know very well that uh, in the, um, what has happened to the data. So when we talk about connectivity and when we talk about uh, uh, data, we had. Uh, 500 terabit per second in 2016. So that was the global data. Now we talk about two petabit per second in 2020. Just to have an idea, two petabit means 20 million of high definition video simultaneously delivered to people. So it means a lot, a lot of data. And, uh, and this is not going to stop. This uh, is going to double, keep doubling every two years. So there is an enormous amount of data. And uh, this, uh, what is happening on the data, so even the geography of the data is not only growing, but is even moving the directories of the data. So what we know is that more and more the data will move towards the south, and eastern part of the world. So, and coming back to the, the partnership and what we are talking about, you know, the MENA region, um, because of this data, of course, are moving even further in the south uh, um, and eastern part of the world. We in Sparkle, we are, of course, uh, since years collaborating with that region, between Europe and that region and uh, we will do even further. One example of this collaboration and partnership has been in 2019, the first 5G roaming ab agreement signed between us and Etisalat that uh, we are happy to have in the, in the panel. And that is in order to allow 5G rollout globally uh, in uh, in the world and in this in this um, in this sense uh, between Europe, of course, uh, and the MENA region. Thank you so much, and um, that leads me very very nicely on to bring you in here, Hatem, to this discussion. To um, we've heard there of the work that's going on with um, you know with uh, with both countries and how important that is. And again, we talk about you know the richness of data, which delivers so many opportunities. So Eti Salat really not just being a a local player, but really making sure that you're working with other countries. Talk to us a little bit about that relationship, you know, with Italy that will help enhance connectivity and digitalization for everybody. You know, digitalization has several layers, and I think the first layer of digitalization is the connectivity. And I think, uh, you know, Minister Colau uh, alluded to the connecting people and connecting nations as a key. Uh, uh, foundation of digitalization and, and our theme of expo and the well, theme of I course mean. it is a theme of expo and uh, through the years we have been building both the connectivity inside the country and inside uh, places where we operate and also the global connectivity and where we have done a you know number of cooperation projects with sparkle is also on the international cables and marine cables where uh, I think Elisabetta had uh, you know, the, uh, the diagram behind her with all the cables going around, around the world. So we have been partnering in a number of the international cables that connect through the UE, off to Asia, to Africa, and to Europe, that brings that infrastructure of the world together. Because to have digitalization in one country is a success, but to have true digitalization, the international connectivity remains a key pillar of this because uh, as we are moving to a world where a lot more of the information is in the cloud that international connectivity with the presence of these data centers around the world it becomes essential to have that global connectivity and again it is about that connectivity as you say it's not just in one country it's when all countries can come together this is when we see the real true value of digitalization Kwang, talk to us more about the internet of things and particularly when the solutions there can really help to foster digitalization and transformation in Italy and indeed the opportunities that are there. Yeah, in Italy we have a, a very mixed situation at the moment. Uh, um, if we take for instance the manufacturing sector that is one of the most important that we have in Italy, we have a beautiful example like uh, our customer Exor, uh, which is located in the northeast uh, of Italy, that is a 5G connected factory. 
uh, that is fully automated with a lot of uh, AI powered use cases like uh, predictive maintenance and many others. And then we have a number of uh, other examples with the new generation equipment, also thanks to public administration, uh, public uh, incentives, uh, but still not uh, uh, fully exploited, like, like not properly connected uh, or without any uh, real a AI use cases. And then we have also the long tail with even uh, the lag behind, so with even uh, no uh, new generation uh, equipment. Um, and that's obviously, it's a kind of mixed uh, in, in manufacturing. And in the public sector as well, we have uh, points of excellence like um, uh, the city of Venice, the beautiful city of Venice, uh, that has our uh, smart control room that gathers together all the urban data available. And with uh, AI, they, the administration can measure real time uh, uh, touristic flows, uh, predict uh, uh, traffic congestions, also through water, of course. And uh, another, another many use cases uh, also about sustainability, like uh, waste management, etc. And we have, uh, of course, many other examples where uh, cities, they, didn't have, uh, they, d they don't have uh, even access uh, to data. So overall, uh, when we talk about uh, IoT, the situation is very mixed, uh, but things are moving uh, in the right direction, uh, at least now. And that's exciting. I need, to, I need to go to that beautiful city. Yeah. I have to admit, I haven't made it there yet, so I can add to the digital data. Um, Professor Van Stray, if I can come to you, please. And we heard the minister earlier talking about the need for skills. And, you know, we look at the work that you are doing at the Apple Academy to, you know, talk to us about, you know, what's needed to instill, um, you know, skills for students to really make sure that we get them prepared and make sure they're the entrepreneurs and they're the leaders for the future in this sector. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And I do apologize for not being there. OK, I mean, the, the problem of competence is very high. And uh, here we, have, uh, we need to face with two different but major uh, competing needs, because on one end, we need to provide very highly skilled, uh, specialized competencies uh, in uh, major high-tech uh, issues like AI, data, uh, data science, or Internet of Things, and cybersecurity. On the other hand, uh, since we are talking about digital transformation, I mean, bringing digital everywhere, we need to have also people that have uh, specific competencies uh, vertical domains like health or government or uh, mobility or transportation and uh, everything. So, I mean, uh, what we have been dying, doing here in Napoli is that actually we try to um, com uh, complement what we do traditionally in our university, I mean, to provide very skilled competencies uh, in vertical domains. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, we, are, uh, we are working with companies so that we can uh, uh, in bring in uh, people with uh, different backgrounds, like people with the law degree or coming from social science or from uh, medical schools and so on, so that if these people can work with technicians, with technologists, and um, work towards uh, digital transformation. And this is quite new. We started with the Apple, with the Apple Developer Academy, but then we are working with Tim and Cisco and other companies so that because uh, we are working together to provide this uh, uh, important competence that uh, really need to be uh, multidisciplinary in this sense. Repeating and uh, reinforcing what we heard from the Consul General early to, you know, the focus here, multidisciplinary too, and we need to make sure that uh, it's probably the first time that everybody needs these skills in every, if it doesn't matter if you're an engineer or an entertainer, you need digital skills. So it's an exciting time for the industry. Elisabeth, if I can come back to you, please. Um, you talked a lot about connectivity and digitalization, of course, you know, looking at you know, enter uh, enterprises, institutions and that. But talk to me just a little bit about emerging trends that you see happening as things, as in this very, very dynamic business. Yes, exactly. And uh, of course, the trend are always coming from uh, technology. And, you know, uh, my background is, uh, is uh, technology. So that's, uh, uh, that is the key for the evolution of connectivity as well. Because yes, on my background, I have uh, all uh, the 
uh, cable uh, and uh, you know terrestrial and uh, subsea and that is important that is the hard part of connectivity but on top of the hard part of connectivity we need some solution because enterprise and institution the transformation that they are doing is getting even more complicated because they have branches around the world people are in the office but people working from home now and then there is a public cloud but there is a multi-cloud and then there is a private cloud so the 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 way to connect the people at work in the office and with the application public and private is getting very complicated and we need to simplify the life of the enterprises so that's why we are working uh, since uh, a year on a software defined wide area network so in order to add software on of course on the fiber and the physical infrastructure we have it uh, because that is becoming key to introduce flexibility and agility and speed that the enterprise needs in their transformation and together with enterprise it's also important to work in a co-management way because we as operator of course we know how to operate things that's not uh, what the enterprise wants to do but the enterprise wants to be in control so this is also important that we do it in the co-managed fashion and the last but not the least to do it in a secure way so another important thread trend um, to, uh, in addition to the SD1 is the SAS, eh? so is the secure access service edge. So the, the content is going more and more on a periphery, on the edge, but we need to be sure that wherever you access to the information needs to be secure. And that needs to be become embedded with the software solution we provide with connectivity. So there is a lot of new technology coming into the picture and is a fundamental new technology that will help in a fast and secure way the transformation of enterprise and institution of course as well and a lot of that new technology too great new technology coming from italian companies as well you know talk to me a little bit we need private and public sector working together we need everybody on the digital journey so to speak what can perhaps Italian companies do to actually help make sure that we're, we're, getting in, we're heading in the right direction? I think cooperation is, uh, again, the name of the game globally. So we have to continue to cooperate. And no one is able to be uh, you know, creating that digitalization alone. So after the infrastructure, there's the platform and the software, there is the human skills. And there are also a lot of hardware components to that digitalization other than the connectivity. So we need to see how we can cooperate on these different layers. And not, there is no one place that has all these different components. So we all need to work together in order to deliver that digitalization. And I think in the past couple of years with the pandemic and uh, you know, with, with a different way we work the different way, we study the different way people go ahead. And also as new technologies are emerging, for example, things like autonomous cars and, you know, basically this is digitalizing driving. So this is driving that everybody used to sit at the steering wheel and now it's becoming digital. And this needs a lot of all the things we talked about, a lot of the connectivity, but also a lot of hardware, a lot of infrastructure to allow this to happen. So by understanding what are the key competencies that everyone has and being able to uh, incorporate and, and that into the overall framework and working together, we can deliver a much more digital world. Now, Lorenzo, we look at um, a lot. We're looking to the future. We're looking at new companies. We're looking at all this dynamic, exciting industry. But we also need to look perhaps at a company like yourself with Rena around for you know, many, many years. We look way back in history. This is what all new companies need to be doing. They need to be looking for the long term. They need to be building resilience. What can your company do to actually help make sure that you know, the companies of the future sustain and can actually have you know a good future sure uh, well yes as you said arena has been around for about 
160 years now, wow. so surely we've been adapting to... And a lot of changes, of course. Pretty many changes. We are facing now our third industrial uh, revolution, so um, sh surely we, we can be an example of uh, how to uh, remain competitive uh, uh, throughout changes. Um, let me say that even, even change itself today is different than before. Uh, meaning that earlier you could wait for the change, analyze it, and adapt. Uh, today, if you do that, it's too late. You need to kind of uh, forecast the change uh, and embrace it. Um, and uh, talking about the change, uh, uh, especially uh, today with, the, with this all uh, new pace uh, of, of the change, um, companies need to reshape their business models first. Uh, but to follow that, to being able to sustain the new business models, they need to update their infrastructures, for sure. But most of all, they need to upskill their people to be able to exploit at best the new infrastructures. Uh, just to bring a couple of very quick examples of what uh, we've been doing recently, um, let's say, uh, thanks to the vision of our top management, Arena started our digital transformation way ahead of uh, the COVID-19 pandemics. So when COVID hit, uh, early in 2020, RINA was able to migrate uh, suddenly 4,000 people into 100 offices around the world uh, in smart office from one day to another. This is something that not every company has been doing just because they were not ready from an ICT perspective and from a people skill perspective. Also from a business delivery perspective, uh, we've been partnering with uh, major companies like Microsoft to migrate some of our uh, services old services in a new fashion. So we have uh, cloud platforms like uh, what we call Arena Cube, through which we deliver uh, our, uh, our services to our clients in a new fashion, in, uh, let's say, safer and more effective way. And again, you know, you bring back the very, very important focus here on people and upskilling people. And Professor uh, Venter, if I can come back to you on this one, Professor, you know, everybody is talking about what we need and the skills we need and the people we need. You know, where do you see the, the most urgent, the most necessary in terms of the skills, particularly with students and how they, they actually deal, particularly with the public administration as well? Um, Can you hear us? I believe that uh, actually we shouldn't find any major difference between the students that want to work in the private sector and students that want to make a career in the public sector. Uh, I see that we have three levels where we need to act. So the first one is that we need to provide that all people working in the government, the public sector, need to have basic competencies, but we, we need to keep them updated. So we, need, we are talking here in, uh, about the continuous education. Then, of course, we need to have a specialized skills. I mean, the geeks and nerds that uh, they must work on AI or cyber security, and they need to work inside the government, but they need to be an, an important part of the government. They shouldn't be, as before, inside a dungeon, be, be, I mean, below a ministry. And, uh, but we need to put them at the uh, you know, executive boards. And finally, we need to work on the manager, the directors that are really the backbone of the decision points inside the government and the public administration. And we need to make them aware about the potential of digital transformation. And to do that, we need to bring them inside these competencies. So we need to have been, uh, uh, we need to be able to teach them what is digital technology and what is the huge potential about digital transformation. Um, and Kwang, when we think about the public sector, you know, just what Professor is saying there, we almost need the private sector mind. We need that entrepreneurial spirit. It's, it's a different view of to what old public sector used to be. How can we make sure that the public sector is adopting the right technology and making sure that they're moving, you know, the digital transformation in the direction that they need to do? Yeah, we need everything. We need the, from public sector, we need the, the private sector itself uh, because uh, the, uh, the, the impact of the IoT in, in, in Italy will be huge in the next, uh, in the next future. We forecast that uh, the impact in manufacturing will be uh, plus uh, 2.5 billion by uh, 2025. 
thanks also to plus one percentage point of productivity. The automotive, uh, more than plus three billion. Energy utility, plus two billion. E-health, uh, one billion. In this context, uh, it's very important to have uh, public administration, uh, or pu the public sector, helping also the private sector to exploit this opportunity. Because we are in a kind of perfect storm now. Uh, firstly, customers are much more demanding for digital customer experience. If they buy something, they want an Amazon experience. If, if they interact with someone, they expect a WhatsApp experience. If they interact with something, they, they want uh, an Apple experience. And so public administration and private sector is forced uh, to transform their processes and to digitize themselves and also to digitize their customer experience. Secondly, we, as, as said, we are in a in unpredictable context. Uh, uh, let's think about tourism. Tourism is constantly uh, transforming year by year. And also everything related to supply chain is uh, dramatically changing every time. So it's very important to have access to big data analytics, uh, real time to take real decision uh, at the right moment. And finally, we have the recovery and resilient plan that is a unique ex uh, opportunity for public and private sector to transform themselves. Uh, in this context, Olivetti uh, wants to provide end-to-end -end solution about uh, uh, 5G IoT, big data analytics, uh, and digital payments uh, to help uh, public and private sector across uh, this journey. Lorenzo, when we listen to what's going on here, it's, you know, it's very dynamic, it's very exciting, it's changing, but which also brings a bit of uncertainty to it. You know, what can you do when you're advising clients in terms of maybe you know, the opportunities that are there, of course, but also mitigating the risk that might be there? That's an excellent subject. Uh, for sure, this whole transformation is bringing along uh, major, uh, major opportunities, uh, like exploring a new uh, unexplored territory. Um, as, as, as Rina, we managed to be ahead of the change, uh, transforming some of our services into, into digital solutions, uh, like we, we started uh, early in 2019, uh, already introducing what we call uh, uh, smart inspections through drones, through smart helmets, and we were the first uh, ship classification society to mm, conduct a full inspection of a ship completely from uh, from remote. Um, so those are solutions that needs to be there to maintain, uh, uh, to adapt to the change, to exploit uh, the, the, the means that the digital transformation is bringing uh, to, be, to, be, to, to improve even efficiency in terms of business. But as you said, um, for sure these all uh, new possibilities are also possibilities for uh, malicious uh, people. So companies must be uh, aware of uh, uh, of, of these new threats that, uh, that are around. Uh, RINA today is uh, among the leaders in terms of uh, cybersecurity uh, engineering services, uh, consultancy. We, uh, we often uh, advise our clients uh, to make sure they invest in the digital transformation of their uh, infrastructures, but they must make sure that they as well invest in the protection of their infrastructure in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, counteracting any potential uh, cyber attack. We were first subject of a cyber attack uh, uh, early in 2020. Um, fortunately, just because we are first consultants of others uh, into, in terms of cyber security, uh, our infrastructure was resilient enough and our people were skilled enough to, to uh, react uh, uh, promptly, so we suffered minor to no damages. But a company that would not be as ready as we were, could have suffered major financial losses, uh, uh, disruption of business, uh, uh, damages on their own uh, image, and, and so on. So for sure, uh, new opportunities, if people are uh, ready to, to take them, but definitely must be very careful to new, new threats. Indeed, I mean, a very, very vital point to bring up and something that I think, you know, right across the board, something people need to look at. And very often I hear it's, it's, it's not if there's going to be a cyber attack, it's, it's when. So it's about being ready to make sure. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit earlier, you know, about the great work that's going on here uh, at the Italian Pavilion, in particularly with our student group. And I believe Antonio uh, Giametta is with us, uh, one of the peer 
mentor groups. Is Antonio here? Yes. Um, yes, uh, we have time for maybe one question if you would like to you know, tell us a little bit about the great work you're doing and position maybe one quick question to maybe one or two of our panelists. Yes, good morning to everyone. Uh, as you said, I'm one of the peer mentor of the Italy Pavilion here at Taxpo 2020 Dubai, but I'm also a cybersecurity student at the University of Salerno. And He'll be busy. He will get employed, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm coming all the way from the academia of the pavilion where we're doing an innovative workshop about the digital transition with Lewis, uh, Electronica and Cyborgate. And I'll ask you, you this question. If we have to to find a good side of, about the COVID-19 pandemic, we can prob probably find in the digital digitalization. We've seen, we've seen a lot of uh, non-digital native being forced to use smart solution or just have to do video calls to make the world go on. And do you, do you think that this kind of uh, power up of boost could bring in uh, short and medium terms uh, a boost about the digitalization and the evolution, and in which terms? Thank you so much. Um, let me put that question to Elisabetta uh, um, in terms of, and you had mentioned earlier about you know, the changing work environment, how people have to work from home. Um, you, know, you have to work from wherever you show up these days. So in response yes. to Antonio there, if you can address that question, and perhaps Hatham, you might address it afterwards. Elizabeth. Yes, I, I think that the answer is yes. Uh, so what has happened in the last two years has definitely been a boost for a digitalization. People that didn't know how to use uh, really digital, uh, you know, app and so on, they've been forced and now they are becoming very good. What is important, I think that is a call for action is uh, this uh, will help uh, to do a step ahead because there has been an improvement, I think 10 years of acceleration in the digitalization. If I look at Italy, for example, what is important is that now the company industries and enterprise institution start from where we are and bring this to the next step because a lot of things has happened but too fast and maybe too extreme. So now needs to become uh, to normalize and become more normal and doing, uh, keep doing a step further. And I think we've seen this around the world. I mean, how has it been here? Everybody is online and it's like there's, there's no choice anymore. I, I think it, it really depends and differs from one country to the other. So uh, with what happened with the pandemic, some countries were ready from infrastructure point of view and therefore it just confirmed that that pre-built and vision of building great infrastructure does help when these things happen. And I think, you know, UE is a great example of this. Then the second thing Elizabeth mentioned is some people that were not really joining the digital world and now they have to, they don't have an option, they have to join the digital world. And then the third thing is policy because this pandemic forced a lot of policies to accelerate in development. So for example, everywhere around the world, including here, you had to appear in front of a notary public to sign a contract. Now you do it entirely digital using video conference and using digital identification. Even in front of courts and law, there are lots of court sessions that have happened digitally and that has also made it much more efficient, much more effective and faster to come out with a verdict with these court sessions are happening digitally and maybe happening with people being in different locations and different countries at the time. So these policies have also come into effect and will stay with us. So really the pandemic has a bit of a silver lining to the digital world by having become a catalyst to really push all these transformation activities to happen much faster than they would have happened has it not come. Um, Antonio, thank you for that question there and I hope that has helped inform you and news you can bring back and share with everybody. We're um, coming to the close of this so I do want a quick closing word from everybody. So Professor, perhaps if I might just quickly start with you, just a very, very quick closing word in terms of, you know, we look to the future, we see what has to be done, where do you see the big urgency 
at the moment in terms of a, a message you want to send out, and particularly to you know, your students and the leaders of the future and the companies that hopefully will employ them? Uh, I would say that we need to continue this work. Uh, uh, I've been uh, listening to the question before, and uh, actually the pandemic has really uh, allowed us to get a boost in, in, in moving it towards digital competences, digital technology. We, we shouldn't uh, wait any, any, any second more. Uh, we need to go on on this, and we need also to uh, invest in startups and new talents, bringing these ideas and um, the products and services to the market as soon as we can. That's very important. When we look at, you know, again, the urgency that there is in this industry, it's dynamic, it's changing, but again, what do we need to be doing now to make sure we're on the right road? Yeah, as uh, stated by uh, Mr. Canavacciuolo, we are in the middle of uh, an industrial revolution. Uh, we are lucky or not, I don't know, but we are in the, in the middle. As I, I like a, a quote of Charles Darwin that says, in a changing environment is not the most intellectual of the species that survives, uh, or nor the strongest but the most responsive to change. And to be responsive to change, 5G IoT, big data analytics, and digital payments are mandatory. So public and private has to adopt those technology now, because now is the moment. And as we are talking also about skills, new generation skills, so the students of today and the workers of tomorrow will be fundamental for, for this transformation, not only for skills, that is uh, mentioned many times, but for me, even more important than skill that has a high level of uh, obsolescence uh, is the digital mindset. Digital mindset uh, is the most important ingredient. And indeed, we even heard that from Her Excellency. One of the things she mentioned too was the concept, the mindset has to, to shift. Elizabeth, a closing word from you. Yes, so my, um, mine is a bit of warning because the urgencies we have heard is the fact that uh, global connectivity is the key enabler for a digital transformation we need to invest a lot of money to invest in infrastructure and in solution we need to be sure that institution and the regulators are taking care of the fact that we need to monetize because only monetizing we can keep investing in order to connect the world lorenzo that's um, you know with the great resilience that uh, rena has in place what do we need to be doing to make sure we see companies like that down the road? I, I'd, like, I'd like to share just one last uh, experience that has been very beneficial from our perspective, which is uh, a different change between the relation uh, with the, between industries <coughs> sorry, and, uh, and academia. Uh, earlier, uh, industries were just benefiting from the progress that academia was doing in R&D. Uh, today, what we see needful is that industry interacts with the academia in order to make sure the academia aligns its curricula to the business needs of a very fast changing uh, uh, business. So uh, creation of, uh, for example, joint masters like RINA is doing with many uh, um, universities uh, around the world uh, helps the academia to, to be up to the level of producing the right professionals for the current business needs because there's no more time to wait for the update of the skills. Yes, a very, very important point there. And I think we, many of us have come out of university and had to scratch our head and wonder what were we qualified to do. And then it took us several years to figure it out. But as you say, there's no time for that anymore. Hatem, I'm going to leave you a closing word here. You know, our, our home provider here in the UAE, Etsy Salat, but with great reach, you know, Italy and beyond. Uh, what do we all need to be doing now? I mean, a lot of great things have been said, but I think it's very important to always have vision for the future. Because even if we think of the digitalization and what we just need today, we will not deliver it. The only way to do is look to the future, keep expecting what will come, work against it, develop against it, educate and train talent against what we believe the future will be like. So when the future comes, we're ready for it. If we keep looking under our feet and where we are today, we will not get there. What a wonderful closing line. And in fact, I, we've been doing many, many sessions on digitalization at other pavilions um, all week. And somebody yesterday actually talked about this very thing. It's like there's no point in us spending all our time, wasting our time saying, what do we do wrong? What are we, what, where have we come from? It is about that sort of optimism about the possibilities 
that are to come. So that's a great note to leave it on. So please, a very, very big thank you to, um, you know, uh, Dr. Venter, or Professor Venter, thank you for being with us. Elisabetta, thank you so much for joining us as well. Um, Hatem to you, Kwang, and to Lorenzo. So a great uh, first panel here, and really sets us on the scene. Thank you all. That was just our first panel. We have another great panel to come through. And, um, you know, but again, I think what we heard there was very much setting the scene, I think, for what, even setting it up for our next panel where we're going to talk about public administration. But it is also, I loved that concept about, you know, it doesn't matter if you're the public sector or the private sector. This is, it's almost the great leveler in terms of what's happening now, the skills that are needed for everybody in this industry, for every sector, for every industry. Um, we're taking away some chairs here, this is fine. But um, there is so much that we all have to do. And again, you, I think, the, the industry leaders, the, the custodians of, of the knowledge, so to speak, you know, the world is very much depending on what you do, what you deliver, and indeed how you deliver it. Um, I think we're ready for our second session, so this is wonderful. We will get started. And again, we have three virtual participants. I'll introduce them in a moment. Um, but if I might bring up the CEO of Nouvel uh, here to join us, please. Carlo De Saro Biondo is with us. Um, Carlo, please take a, a seat here. We'll put you in the middle, over, wherever you're comfortable. This is my seat here, so why don't you sit here beside me? And also here joining us in person, Andreo uh, Fagiano, he is the head of uh, Eddie Little, which is here in the Middle East. So we're delighted, Andrea, to have you here as well. But joining us virtually, we have with us two. We have uh, Enrico Fazio, the marketing and sales director from c 4 get Electronica Group. Uh, Enrico, say hello to us here. The way our people, uh, can you hear us? All right, lovely to see you. Um, Eugenio, uh, Santa Gata, the CEO of Tesla, Tes Telsi. Um, Eugenio, hello, lovely to see you. Morning. And we're also absolutely delighted to have with us the president for the Industry Federation for Digital uh, Content, and he is also the vice president for South Europe for Cisco. Please, a very warm welcome for Agostino Santoni. Good morning, everyone. So um, thank you all for being here. But Augustino, if I might start with you, because in your role, um, you have two heads, two hats to wear today. But in your role as the president for the Federation for really the you know, in industry and digitalization, perhaps you might start us off with a little overview of what's happening in the industry right now, and particularly when it comes to public administration. What do we all need to be looking out for? Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm really delighted to be with all of you this morning. Um, listen, listen, I believe for our industry, it's our moment. If I look at Italy and the opportunities and the investments coming through the next generation European funds, it's our moment, period. Why we need a complete public sector fully digitized for our companies and when i'm saying our companies i have in mind the entire enterprise segments for italy because what two words came to my mind the first one is related to productivity productivity for our companies has been always an area of improvement so that's why we need the digitization of public sector companies small companies big companies needs to be more productive and public sector can play a significant role because if we simplify the experience of companies in dealing with the public the Italian public sector we will become more productive the second word that came to my mind is opportunity so if all the investments around digital will become real the country will become a digital platform and this digital platform has to be open has to be secure with privacy in mind and has to be inclusive. Now think about public sector as a digital platform where companies can take advantage of all the data, all the new services. Then we can create because of this data and because this data has to be interoperable, 
You can create new business models. Healthcare can take advantage of it. Agriculture can take advantage of it. Public services can take advantage of it. So I believe we have to have the common ambition to create a country, our beautiful country, a digital platform, and public sector has to play a significant role. We have, as an ecosystem, and this is the ambition we have as a federation in our industry, to be the player to drive this digitization of the country. And the final goal has to be that Italy has to be the country of possibilities for our people, for our companies, and for the future of our, of our entire country. So that's why I believe it's our moment. That's why the program of the Federation is called NOW, ORA. Thank you for the question, by the way. Um, and, I, and I love that. It's, it's our moment, and it is this industry really you know, I think has transformed itself over the years. When we look back at, I suppose it's it's humble but essential beginnings to see it is probably you know the most important industry in the world right now. Um, you know, so it's so important for everybody. Carlo, talk to me about you know cloud services. We heard about it earlier, the importance there. You know how it will help that digital transformation, and particularly when we're looking at governments and institutions, the work you're yes. doing, and also with Tim. Okay, so. I think uh, to follow up on what Agostino was saying, if you think about cloud, the first thing to do for me is thinking about the changes it implies for business models. I mean, if you look at the situation for any small companies, for a government or a big company before cloud, in order to have an advanced information systems, you needed to design it or buy it, and it was a significant investment of capital and a lot of time. Two, if you worked in a company with lots of people, you needed to adapt each and every of the softwares that you had you know, in, the, in, the, in the computers to work together in a certain way. And three, it was very difficult to interconnect with your providers or customers or users because everybody used a different protocol. So I think the arrival of the internet means, now 25 years ago, we can share information because companies and uh, can understand each other because of the protocol. Two, what was reserved for people who had the high capacity of investment is now available for all, thanks to cloud. And three, innovation can be much faster. So I agree, but I would say, I would paraphrase what, what Agostino did. Agostino and I are friends, so he knows that I can make fun with lots of respect. It's not our moment. It's the moment of the users of the public administration. <laughs> of course, it's a moment as well. <laughs> but I think it's those characteristics making what was a capital investment a variable cost. Allowing innovation because collaboration is easier means that if you define, and using the same protocol as a language, means that if you define rules for protecting data, for security, for you can apply them and evolve. To finish, the public sector everywhere in the world is a sector that has always very strong financial constraints. We expect from our public servants not to waste money. Now, we also expect a certain quality of service and the public administration, because of the fact in general that they have been with money constraints for a long time, needs to restart. Cloud allows you to restart in a new way, limiting investments and maximizing the results short term. That's why I believe that we have a role to play in supporting the public administration movement, better a more secure world and better services. Indeed, I think, and you know, there is a huge responsibility on all of, uh, of you companies, I think, and uh, you know, everybody is stepping up to that. I think you're all very aware of, of it. Eugenio, if I can bring you in here, you know, following on from this, when we look at progressive digitalization in the public administration, again, you know, there are the threats that we heard in our earlier panel to cybersecurity, safety, um, you know, is of paramount importance. Talk to us a little bit more about that, and particularly in relation to the public sector. Thank you for having me. Uh, our long and uh, consolidated experience in uh, working with the public administration, uh, helping them setting up their strategies, uh, preventing threats, managing threats, has been and still is uh, an enlightening experience, uh, leading to a lot of discoveries. 
and sometimes uh, alarming wake-up calls. Um, for example, as, as long as the process and the, the phenomenon remains, uh, digitization phenomenon, meaning uh, turning and transforming processes and data, there will be no real concrete step forward. Whereas digitalization is transformation, quite different. Today, everywhere in the world, not only in Italy, we're still uh, witnessing a digitization process. In corporate world, we talk about changes and disruption of uh, business models, rapidly adapting to uh, changing uh, macroeconomic constraints. In the public administration, when it comes to digital, it is really a shift of paradigm that is uh, needed. It's a matter of mindset because uh, the security that all that entails, as long as it remains something as a concern of the few, of the unlucky seasons of the situation, uh, the public administration will still be the great ill of society when it comes to security. Together with uh, uh, digital transformation, there has to be, and regulators are all uh, obliged to embrace that, and leaders and decision makers within public administrations are, are all called to embrace this change of paradigm in terms of uh, awareness about uh, security, thinking security first, as it was for labor-related things, the paradigm of safety first. We all know now uh, think about safety first when it comes to uh, safety on, uh, in, on, on, uh, on uh, workplace. Uh, the same has to happen within security. Uh, this is happening slowly, slower than the corporate sector, but in, in my view, this is pivotal to bringing forward a successful uh, digitalization transformation process uh, together with the security that comes with it. And uh, I think you're so right there, Andrea. You know, health and safety is number one for so many companies around the world as its own department almost. So now we also need the health and safety of uh, our IT systems, of the, the cloud, of the, uh, you know, the digitization of everything. We have to think differently, as you say. Andrea, let me bring you in here and following on from that too, particularly when we look at the ICT demand supply dynamics here in the region. And while we may look at public administration around the world and people have different impressions of it, um, I think there is a sense of you know, entrepreneurship built into our government in this country particularly. It's a bit different, maybe. You're so right. Um, it's seven years that I'm here, you longer than me. <laughs> so I have a sense of what is about living here and having business here. So um, there is a momentum, everybody uh, mentioned this inflection point uh, at the first wave of relief at the beginning of the year in 2021. Supply and, uh, and, uh, and demand dynamics is very strong at the moment. I have a privileged position because I cover 13 countries here from art to the little, so I see and I can compare countries. Of course, UAE and uh, KSA stands out for the level of activism. In the, in, uh, and you are very right. Uh, here, the public sector is a special one because uh, the all the region and uh, UAE and, um, and, and the rest of the countries are pretty much dominated by a government economy. So, and uh, if the public sector were, were not so ambitious, we would not see so many projects, so many progress that's going on. And this is the main, the, main, uh, the main element. So, this is a land of opportunity after all. And, uh, and this is the sense uh, that is embedded in the institution over here, and the ambition level is uh, much greater than I've seen in other parts of the, of the world. That's why, that's why uh, we are uh, seeing plans everywhere that are, uh, um, that are being uh, put in, uh, in place. And we will see great things uh, coming up. I have only one remark. 
probably the uh, infrastructure challenge in the region will be over by 2024, 2025. It's not over yet. Um, Mr. Adam Dowidar and also Elisabetta Romano from Sparkle were saying that digital transformation needs an infrastructure layer. But it's not over yet. So the biggest project will be coming to place by that uh, the time, the time frame, two, three years. After that, there is a sophistication of offer. And this is my last, uh, my last point. Probably supply is, uh, there's a lack of supply. It's uh, something uh, that the sophistication of the talents and technology put in place, and that's why since the beginning of the year, we see a lot of a new initiative, new vertical uh, creation. Telecom Italia Group is very, is very special in that sense. The is very, uh, we have a Telsi, we have a Nuvol. There is a lot of specialization, vertical specialization. This is coming here, also in this part of the world. I think there's so many opportunities here. And even, Carlo, as you said, the public administration must uh, you know, look at the purse strings and make sure they're not wasting money. Um, you know, they're not wasting money in this region, but I think there's just maybe a little bit more money in the UAE when it comes to actually working in the government. So they're, they're in, a, in a good position. I'll come back to you in a minute, though. I want to go to Enrico first, if I may. And again, following on, when we look at the threats, I think particularly you know, in security and all that, and the, the threats for public um, you know, security in public administration. You know, is it, do you see it happening around the world at the same rate? I mean, is it happening in Europe? Is the same thing happening in this Middle East region? What do you think? Well, thanks for the question. Uh, we all experience with that we are in, in the middle of digital revolution. Uh, some, some people much more important than me state that this is the most important revolution in human being history, meaning that it is more important than the discovery of fire, for example, because everything is changing. Uh, so, so we all experience, at least since two years, that digitalization of public administration is, is proceeding so good. Uh, user experience are nice. Uh, all of us are now using uh, our mobile phones to, to pay taxes and so on, and something that was unbelievable just three years ago. Uh, so very good, very nice. Um, from the other sense, from the other hand, I am unfortunately not so sure that the level of security of robustness of digitalization is so good as the experience we have. So what we need in public administration to have uh, the, the securization of, of this part, we need to securize the three main components the processes, people awareness about cybersecurity, and, and for sure technologies. So going through these three points, let's see what are the common points of Europe and Menesa. Uh, for my idea concerning the processes, um, for regulation, we are best of breed. Uh, I, I think GDPR regulation is uh, you know, worldwide recognized as one of the best. So for the other country, let's make copy paste. Concerning people awareness, so what concerns people? Um, here in Europe and, and in Menesa, uh, users are enthusiastic users for digitalization. And nobody of us uh, has, has got any difficulties in changing from, from uh, analogic to digital concerning public administration. So very easy use for, for uh, school and for, for COVID uh, tools and, and so on, for taxes. So no need of may having education in the use. Uh, probably we are also too much enthusiastic. So it can be that we are easy clickers, let me say. So in my opinion, from people point of view, we need to, to educate for a, a, a minimal level of awareness to avoid risk. Let's go to the third point. Probably this, in my opinion, is the weaker in Europe and Manassa. Why? Because in technology, I think we are a bit followers and, and this is not good. Uh, as in digital, a difference from the other parts where physical part is so important. Uh, for the solution, I, I used to say the winner takes it all. Uh, there's no cost, no, no recurring cost. So if you've got the best solution, you can deploy, deploy to everybody and, and the second one doesn't take anything. Uh, this is not good for public administration because we have to dominate technologies. So what I suggest is to have national solution, local solution, for each and every technologies, mainly for security technologies, not to be the only one, but to be at least an alternative to the big ones. So Cyclogate is there for this, also, also working with, with Telecom Italia. We, we invest to, to, to be a vendor, to find solution, national solution to secure our public administration as an alternative to the big ones. 
And there's so much, I think, to be done here. Carlo, in, I can hear the passion in your voice when you know, Agostino had said that it is our time as an industry. But as you said, the big winners are you know, the people. Um, we can all see the advantages, I think, brought around by digitalization and the fact we can do so much on our mobile phone and that. But where is the big advantage that you see for the, the man on the streets, for, for the citizen? Gain time, for example, in the relationship we have with the public administration. Make your life easier. Um, you know, I've been working in the internet now for 25 years and a long time at, at Google, at AOL, at different companies. And if, if I had to say what is the main thing that made the internet successful, it's not the idea, it's quality of execution and simplicity. If you think about it, uh, with all due respect, uh, Apple has not invented the smartphone. iMode in Japan, and actually here as well, was there 10 years before. But it was difficult to use. Human beings are lazy. Human beings are expecting a lot of things, and they don't want to waste time. So to me, it's the simplicity in the relationships and the depths that usage of data can bring allow the public administration to improve the relationship with users every day using those technologies. And I do think um, governments around the world, we're hearing more and more innovative ideas, I think, coming from governments. Because I think, I think consumers and you know, customers are demanding it, basically. Citizens are demanding it, and they're well, responding. If, if you think about it today, you expect the same quality of relationship, sorry, of, of simplicity of, of, of relationship, yes, in everything you do. And for long, we talked about the paradox uh, that now I think COVID is changing, which is up to two years ago. Yeah, I think I can honestly say that. In Italy, for sure, I think in UAE as well, I think all over the world, we were much more advanced in the usage of technology we make as persons than when we work, right? Or in the Edward administration. We all use an iPhone, we, uh, we use lots of things, even old people and young people do. But when you come to your office, traditions, processes, rules, make it much more difficult to adopt technology. I think COVID is changing that, and today we want the same level of usage of technology when we deal with the public administration to have, I don't know, a certificate, or when we work, or when we consume, whatever. And the good news is cloud is ready to make this happen. Augustino, please come in here, and when we look at you know, the digital transformation that the public administration uh, around the world is undergoing, where are the big advantages in that you know, for the private sector, whereby they can all work together more efficiently. You are muted, Agostino. See, we still have a few little technical problems when we come to digitalization. I see. <laughs> yeah, it's a user problem. It was not a technological <laughs> problem, so I'm the problem. Um, so I was saying before, the productivity gain uh, for sure is going to be a, a great opportunity for companies. Let me also call out the kind of economy I see today. And I like to say that we are living the economy of talents. Because while if everything that we said so far this morning is going to happen, and I'm sure it's going to happen, then the issue is how fast we're going to create one million people well trained on digital. How fast we reskill our people. How fast we are going to reskill public sector people, some, uh, companies, employees in our companies. So I, I believe while we are discussing uh, the shortage of raw materials in most of our industries, I believe we have to put at the center of our conversation the capability of countries like Italy to develop talents and to reskill talents. And I believe digital plays a significant role to be inclusive. I don't have in mind only students at school or at university. I have in mind workers, I have in mind unemployed people, I have in mind having an opportunity to people for a second chance. So that's, that's the ambition. If everything that we were saying this morning is going to happen, our companies in our beautiful country will become more competitive in the world and the country will succeed. So that, that's why I believe this moment is is, is a great one, and we have to be fully energized and open to partner among public and private to make it happen now. Um, Enrico, if I can bring you in here, when we look at you know, the progressive digitalization of 
public administration. I mean, yes, it's, it's about education, making sure that everybody knows what to do, and again, the demands from the public administration to meet what the consumers, what the private sector also wants. So again, it comes back to security solutions. You know, do you think people are aware enough? Are they paying enough attention? Um, what, needs, what more needs to be done to make sure that this is number one on people's mind? Uh, well, the, the, the very clever question concerning people education, uh, concerning digitalization of public administration, I think there, there would be two levels of education that is needed. Uh, as stated before, supposing that the technology will be the right one, and I, I'm not talking anymore about this, let's talk about how people have to be educated for digital. Uh, I see two, two, two levels. The first level will be the one that will choose the right thing to be digitalized. What do I mean with this? Uh, not everything must be digitalized from one side, and from the other side, we have to look at digitalization without any dogmatism, so we have to be prepared to change everything. So how to select what to digitalize? First of all, we need people that has to be a talent in, in digital, so a, 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 set, a team very expert in this, uh, selecting the thing to do, so dreaming what could be the advantage of digitalization in, in saving time and having process more robust and so on, taking into account security. So they have to be absolutely aware, very expert, knowing what are the risks in digitalizing. So from one side, I think that we have to change the education of the people, as Agostino said, uh, having in each and every public administration site some empowered team, very expert in digitalization. By empowered, I mean that they have to be the decision makers. They have to know exactly what is digitalization and they have to decide what to do. From the other side, let's see the citizens, so the users. For this part, uh, I think that there's no need to have a very deep education, but only education about cybersecurity awareness. So they have to know what to click, what are the risks. Uh, and so in, in this case, it's like to say, if I have to, to teach the people to drive the car, I don't need them to understand how it works, the engine. They have to know how to drive, what are the risks of driving. So a level much lower, but very important in terms of use. So summarizing all of this concerning the education, I think that from one side, we have to, to, to we need very deep education, very expert and, and competent people empowered to the side. And from the other side, very educated people at low level, if you want, but aware of how it is important. So bring this education to everybody would be a challenge for sure. Eugenio, if I can bring you in here on this one, you know, continuing talking on cybersecurity and what needs to be done. We look at, you know, North Mediterranean, South Mediterranean, we look at the whole Middle East region, you know, do you think everybody shares the same cybersecurity concerns or should they? I have uh, had the privilege of uh, living in the UAE for 15 years, uh, working at different levels with the government uh, concerning security issues of all kind. Uh, to some respect, there are common concerns. Uh, all uh, architectures of uh, public administration, more and more digital and infrastructure, all share the same three basic levels. The application level, the network level, and the data gathering storage and management uh, level. However, it's a matter of how implemented. From uh, my experience uh, in the country and uh, uh, with the current uh, role I have within Team Group in uh, Telsi, I always like to remind myself that after all, we in Italy invented accounting, an incredibly complex reality. And in this respect, complexity is an enemy of uh, security. So whenever an approach tends to become fascinatingly complex, it will always be very inefficient. In the UAE, for example, I think the country and its leadership has been uh, pioneering the concept of making things simple. The level of digital, digitalization is remarkable in the UAE. 
despite the federal architecture of uh, digitalization. Quite sim similar, we're trying to do in uh, Italy, as long as we remind ourselves that uh, we have to keep it uh, simple and stupid, because at the end, oversimplifying it, we are a little dumb when it comes to uh, utilizing uh, digital uh, uh, devices, tools, and, uh, and so on. Um, okay, I, I might say keep it simple and smart, but we'll come back to that. But you're right, it comes back to the simplicity. We don't, we don't want stupid people, um, you know, kind of at the helm of what's going on. But we understand your, your uh, sentiment there without a doubt. Um, Andrea, just listening to all of this, and you had talked earlier about the potential that's here, and we heard it even from the other panel here. You know, talk to us maybe, you know, as everything is changing, where are the trends? Where do you see the use for ICT? What's going to be different in the future? Yeah, so uh, in the in this uh, part of the world, um, in the, the there is an opportunity related to the structure of a society which is younger, more digital, and more close to the and, um, and used to use of app and the digital world. So lots of services are digitized. And uh, we are uh, uh, spoiled to with these digital services. We uh, rarely leave our homes because every service can come home very easily thanks to the, 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 digital, uh, the digital economy. Uh, now, uh, apart from uh, the, the fact that the digital is making our life uh, quicker and easier, as we were saying before with Carlo, and, uh, and this is quite well implemented, I think there are some major uh, uh, use cases that we may see here faster than other parts of the world. First of all, as I was saying before, uh, there is an appetite to be ambitious uh, in, in, in the region uh, and to be quick. So uh, public sector can introduce a new use case, a new case at, the, at the speed of a quick, of, a, of, a, of the click. Uh, what, what I mean, for example, uh, uh, if you force uh, home to have a, a, a smoke detector connected uh, to an IoT network uh, that uh, rely on information for the electrical company and see if anybody's at home, automatically I can, I can check whether when uh, the smoke detector goes on alarm, goes on alarm, uh, I have to send a, a fire guard over there or, or, or not. This is a, a service uh, up and live here in, uh, in Dubai. So there is more and more introduction of uh, services at the crossroad of IoT, artificial intelligence, and uh, data analytics. And I see more and more. And, and, uh, and uh, there are few parts of, uh, of the region, and especially Dubai, that have transformed themselves in labs. Dubai is a sort of labs for digital economy. In case say we will see another lab which will be near, where they're thinking of a very sophisticated uh, element. Now, the fact that these labs are, uh, have a modern foundation with simple layouts enable also the, to think of a complex use case. And Atem Dovidar was uh, referring to before as a connected car. Probably, uh, 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 probably not connected car, um, I'm wrong, autonomous car which is much more complex than just connected car. So autonomous car will probably see uh, a first application here as they see in uh, China and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in California. And, uh, and why is that? First of all, layout helps a lot. Then there is this ambition of driving the digitalization uh, through sustainability. And, uh, and, and probably in two, three years, we will see things here that uh, for the first time, and, uh, and, uh, and it will be a reference uh, at the global level. And that's very exciting. And of course, the government here and those of you who, who live here, you like to, you, you do know that the UAE like to be the first and the biggest and the best. So they'll be clearly working on that without a doubt. Um, Agostino and to all of our panel, we have to wrap this up now. We've come to the end of it. As you began here saying really that this is our moment, um, maybe a word of uh, caution and warning out there to people to make sure that they take advantage of this is our moment, because our moment can move very quickly. So to all the public administrators out there, to the people involved in this industry, what do they need to do to make sure that this moment becomes the shining moment and it lasts for a long time? Uh, I believe they have to embrace the challenge. They have to enjoy the moment. And they have to have fun to reskill their capabilities. 
because there, there, there is a significant energy in the system and we have to make sure that this energy is going to flow to the right processes and systems and at the end is a great change management exercise where people has to be at the center and people has to embrace the challenge and the opportunity is there the opportunity is to to see italy as the country of possibilities and every one of us starting from the public sector has to play their role and i believe it's a great opportunity enrico talk to us about that you know opportunity there is for everybody and the urgency in terms of what people need to be doing now to make sure that they can actually exist into the future well we need to to be aware of what is happening first of all so everybody has to embrace the digitalization and to surf the digitalization not to be dominated by this uh, meaning by, by this that we, we, we have to define what we want to do we have not to leave the definition to other ones so as we are a bit different as every country we have to find which is our way it means what are the services to be delivered what are the things to be digitalized and the way we want to protect this so in, in this way we are surfing once again the digitalization and not uh, being invested by this that is the risk we, we, we have, and all nations have. Because as stated before, uh, the definition of digital means, digital instruments, digital methods are most of the time made abroad, and this is not good. So we have to find our way. This is the only way to, have to be real digital nation once again. Andrea, we look at, again, you know, all of the great opportunities that are here. But again, what's really urgent, what has to happen now to make sure that we can continue? I, I repeated in my last remark before, sophistication of supply is a must to have. So the, 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 the skills uh, of, of people, so we need to import uh, new skill set, but especially more technology, but that's also non-mainstream technology. So it's not only Microsoft, Oracle, uh, Azure, but there are um, lots of, uh, of minor technology that have uh, tremendous impact from a use case point of view, and they can apply, be applied vertical by, by vertical. So if you want to win, you have to attract those skills, but also those technologies that at the end of the day are represented by small, smaller companies. Eugenio, let me come back to you again in terms of you know, all of what you talked about, that simplicity that needs to be there, the focus that needs to be there. What would you say is very urgent right now that the industry and again, public administrators need to be looking at? Once again, yeah, just hit that little button there. All right. So create, develop, and promote proprietary technology. We have a lot of foreign technology, which is fine. But at the same time, the innovation stick will be raised only if we invest in our uh, technology, which means also bring home our coders. We need coders. We need a lot of coding culture. That is very central, in my view. and that must be done with a, a coherent, synergic collaboration between private, public, academia, and why not also the military. Indeed, it is about bringing everybody and get everyone involved in this. Um, Carlo, I've held you to the end because I want to, to uh, send us off with some notes of inspiration in terms of I'm depending on you to do this. Again, the big opportunities you talk about that are there for the industry, that are there for government, that are there more importantly, for the people. Trust, uh, and again, I'm paraphrasing uh, Agostino here. I think the biggest reason for people not to adopt technology is fear. Am I part of the solution or am I part of the problem? And if you're in the public administration, you have such big responsibilities over people, it's very difficult to say I'll embrace change. And also in the past, technology has not always been ready. Now, we brought through COVID the proof that technology can do it. Uh, we know that people expect it. So clearly, trust is the issue. You need to trust the technology, to trust that technology can do it. And you need, if you are, I think, in companies and the public sector, trust yourself and say, I want to be part of the change. I can be part of the change. In methodology, I would propose this. Select something that can be successful immediately as a quick win, because success brings success. 
So if you have a couple of quick wins, because you've chosen things which are maybe easier or that you know that can have an impact, then you'll create a, for yourself this trust and you'll build the trust in yourself and the ability to change. So slice the problem into small bits, choose one or two successes, do it, build the trust in yourself, trust technology, and then go for it. It will work. Exactly. It's, it's not as the big, uh, the big hills in front of us are, are, you know, they're really only small little mounds along the way. We have to take one step at a time. And I think in this system too, again, keep it simple, look at uh, the great opportunities that are out there for government, for companies, and more importantly, I think when everybody realizes how they can benefit individually, because you know, ultimately I think we're, we're all selfish beings in many ways, and if we can see what's in it for us, then I think, as you say, build that trust and move it on. Um, I want to thank you all so much. Thank you for taking all the time. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, again, our virtual friends, Augustino, thank you so much. Eugenio, thank you for being with us. Enrico, thank, thank you. you also. It's been great to have you here. And to Andrea and Carlo here beside me, thank you all. And to our dear audience, thank you so much. Um, a big uh, hand for our great panel here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our panel looking at digitalization today here and the great opportunities there are in the future. Of course, a big thanks to the Consul General and all the team here that work so hard to bring these panels to you and to make sure that you stay engaged, informed, educated, and inspired here at the Italian Pavilion. So a big thanks to our technical crew for keeping us on the air. Um, and, uh, Generally, a big thanks to you, our audience, for showing up. And hopefully, we'll see you again very soon here at the Italian Pavilion. Thank you so much. <laughs>